uh, you say, you challenge the reader, stop asking for feedback and then expressing your opinion. <laughs> it, seems, right. it seems intuitive, yet it isn't. Why is that? It is, it is so hard. The first thing that we want to do when we ask for input is the last thing we should do. What's that? Ask for input, then express my opinion. Mm. If I ask you for feedback or input and start expressing my opinion, what does that sound like? Almost invariably, defensiveness, denial, rationalization, and making excuses. You know, I have feedback back at the office from thousands of people evaluating their bosses. How often do I have feedback that sounds like this? You know, I think you're a great boss because I love the quality of your excuses. <laughs> Never read that before. <laughs> oh, wow. So fight that urge to make excuses and just shut up and listen. Now, I also teach people never promise to do everything people say. Leadership's not a popularity contest. What I'd say is, look, thank you for your ideas. I can't promise to do everything. I'm going to listen and do what I can. Can't change the past. I can change the future. And you know what? I can't get better at everything. I can certainly get better at this. And I'm going to work hard and involve you and ask you to help me get better. Mm. You also challenge us in, in this chapter, number six, uh, on how to get good feedback on our own. You know, it's kind of like out in the field, the everyday office, <coughs> get those radars up or those antennas up rather. And uh, a couple of things you, you list in, in, on page 119, I want to just have you teach on solicit contrary opinions. Again, I think this is, this is really hard for human beings in general, certainly strong personalities who have their own opinion. And, and then you got to go solicit. Wait a second, Marshall. You're telling me I got to solicit, ask for contrary opinions? I, I have two part question there. Number one, what's the best way to do that? And then mm -hmm. number two, what's the best way to receive the opinion? Well, okay, let me answer both. The first thing is, in terms of soliciting the opinions, you need to let people know where you are on the decision curve. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the decision is already made, don't solicit a contrary opinion. Right. You know, if it's a done deal, don't sit there and say, what do you think? Because it really doesn't matter what they think. On the other hand, there's a continuum. You might say to the person, you know, I'm probably going to do it this way. I've almost made up my mind, but I'd like to know everything that could possibly go wrong. That's fine. You may say, you know, I'm really not sure how I'm going to do it. There's my idea right now. I'm, I'm totally kind of confused. What do you think? Or you might say, really, I want to know different opinions. I'm, I haven't really got any idea about this one. What do you think? So you see there's a whole curve. The key is none of those are right or wrong. It's just which one fits the exact situation. And then when you get a different opinion, realize different people have different views and it's okay. Fight that urge to judge the opinion, to prove they're wrong, to prove they're right. And learn to just shut up and listen and thank them and let them know you're going to think about it. Now, for example, I say, I want to be a better listener. Give me three ideas. What I teach people is you don't judge what they say. You listen, even in a positive way. Now, you might say, why not positive? You give me three ideas. First idea, I say, that's a great idea. Second idea, well, that's an interesting idea. Third idea, nothing. What message did I give you about your ideas? Excellent, fair, fail. You see, I, I'm not listening, I'm grading, mm -hmm. I'm judging. And when especially leaders do that to people, they learn to look in your eyes. You know what they're going to tell you? Exactly what they think you want to hear. They're just going to feed ideas to you that they think you want to hear. You're not going to learn anything. Mm. Boy, that is such a great point. I want to stay here and let's go another little wrinkle. Because you also challenge us, you know, to to do what you just said, which is just listen in meetings, become a better listener. Now, we got a lot of small business owners, entrepreneurs, strong personalities listening in, Marshall. So, this question is on behalf of them. All right. So they they if they're honest, they probably are saying, all right, I don't know if my team in, in key meetings are really telling me what they think. They're like Marshall just right. said, they're reading me. I'm a strong personality, I'm the founder, whatever it is, and they tell me what I want to hear. So how do I begin to shift that to get to a point where I'm doing what Marshall says and I'm listening, mm. but I'm not only listening, I have created a, an environment where people are actually saying what they really think. Well, I'm going to answer that question in about three different ways. And they're all going to come from different parts of that book. Oh, that's good. The first one is, as a leader, avoid adding too much value. Now, what does that mean? 
you're the entrepreneur, you're the founder. I'm some young, smart, aggressive person. I come to you with an idea. You think it's a great idea. Your natural tendency is that founders, that leaders say, that's a nice idea. Why don't you add this to it? Well, the problem is the quality of the idea may go up 5%. My commitment to execute may go down 50%. It's no longer my idea. Now it's your idea. Uh, incredibly hard for smart, successful people, especially with technical backgrounds, engineers, scientists, not to constantly go through life adding value. One of my good coaching clients retired a few years ago. His name J.P. Garnier. J.P. was the CEO of a large drug company, GlaxoSmithKline. I asked J.P., what did you learn about leadership as the CEO of GlaxoSmithKline? He said, I've learned a very hard lesson. And by the way, when I teach people, I say, every time you get promoted in life, this lesson will become more real for you. He said, my suggestions become orders. Hmm. Now, if they're smart, they're orders. If they're stupid, they're orders. If they're, I want them to be orders, they're orders. If I don't want them to be orders, they're orders anyway. For nine years, I trained admirals in our United States Navy. Was the first thing I trained those fine admirals? When you get that little star, your suggestions become orders. Hmm. See, admirals don't make suggestions. When an admiral makes a suggestion, what is the response? Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Hmm. That suggestion is an order. I asked my friend JP, what'd you learn from me when I was your coach? He said, you taught me one lesson, helped me be a better leader and have a happier life. I asked him, what was that one lesson? He said, before I speak, breathe and ask myself one question. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And he said, as the CEO of GlaxoSmithKline, 50% of the time before I speak, I'd breathe. Is it worth it? You know what I decide? Am I right? Maybe. Is it worth it? No. So back to that small business owner, that founder, you get that suggestion, fight that urge to talk and fight that urge to add value and recognize, yes, your suggestions are probably going to be orders. What does that mean? Don't make so many stupid suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>